Hello, job seekers. Melanie here with CJ Recruiting. And today we're going to talk about something that you've probably seen in the news a lot. And that is a lot of articles that are focusing on you as an employee and those of you that are choosing to work from home or taking remote jobs, whether you're working from your house or someplace else, hopefully by a beach somewhere. But regardless, the things that the news is, is definitely kind of going in and saying is that you as an employee, your career is going to suffer because you are working remote and you are working from home. Now, I, there's lots of feelings on this one side or another. And I, you know, I don't think that there's been enough of a time duration that I have seen any studies that really have facts that show it does or it doesn't. But a lot of people are kind of going through different areas. So I want to talk about those areas and say, does this affect your career or does this not? And let's give you some strategies as to how to try and avoid some of the career implications that they're saying are occurring if you choose to work from home or work remote. Now, let's begin this whole conversation with saying not everybody's the same. Some people do so well working from homes and working remote. Some people find that they're able to stay way more focused than they are in the office. They spend way more you know, quality time on the projects that they're doing, and they don't get distracted by so many other things. Whereas there are some people that it just doesn't work for, right? And they do need that structure or want that structure and interaction that's different when they're working in the office than then they're working from home. Now, I know employers, a lot of them are just saying 100%, you're more productive if you're in the office. That may not be true for you. So I don't want you to take this video as you have to go in and work from the office in order to be uh, successful in your career. One size does not fit all. But let's talk about three different areas that can help your career in office and what you need to consider doing if you're not in office in order to still get that. Okay, so the first thing is it is definitely easier if you are working in office to get unscheduled FaceTime with other people in the company. What do I mean by unscheduled FaceTime? Well, it's that time that you spend in the morning saying good morning to people. It's those impromptu conversations that occur when you see somebody as you're walking down the hall, as you're, you know, going to pick something up from a scanner, as you're going to get a drink of coffee. It's those type of unscripted, unscheduled conversations that you potentially lose out when you're working from home and working remote. And a lot of times those conversations are with people that you don't normally see and you don't normally talk with. And so when you're working from home or you're working remote, how do you get the opportunity to still do this? Well, it's challenging and the onus falls not on the company, but on you. You need to find ways to interact with more people. Now, here's the good news. It can be a lot faster to interact with people over an email tool or a texting tool or some type of Teams or messaging tool that your company has, as opposed to just walking by the halls and stuff and saying, good morning, good morning. But you're going to have to be the one that's extroverted in the sense and takes the time to reach out to people. You can be targeted about who you reach out to. Now, you may say, oh, what am I supposed to do? Just send a message to you know everybody saying, good morning, how are you doing? Or, hey, what's up with you? That doesn't seem very productive. I agree with you. So let's give you some tools and ways to do this. As companies have done more and more with their intranets, which is kind of their internal systems that they have, a lot of them are sharing news about their employee base. And this happens more and more with bigger companies. Um, or they may be talking about, hey, this department over here was able to hit this goal or whatever. That's an opening for you. That gives you a chance to see who's in that team and maybe send them a message saying, hey, I saw the message on our internet um, where you guys worked on this and were able to accomplish the following. Send a message saying, that sounds really interesting. If you guys ever you know, have time where you need somebody else from this department to participate in one of those, I'd love to talk with you further. Or I'd love to understand more how you approach this. It gives you an opportunity or an opening. Now, let's say your company doesn't have one of these internal type of systems. Well, man, LinkedIn has got your back on this one as well. 
go out and even if you don't necessarily connect with everybody within your company, if you don't feel comfortable yet sending them a connection request, you can still follow them. Go out on LinkedIn, click the follow button for that person so their messages and their things start coming up in your newsfeed and then interact with them. If they post a message out there saying, I'm this, I was really interested in this new development that's happening in our industry, take the time to comment on it and put a message back. So you're starting that kind of impromptu conversation that's not a scheduled meeting. You can also do this by going out, uh, hopefully, on your own company page of the company that you work for, you are following that company. And as that company posts things and you see other people interacting with it, comment. Start to engage people in that. The more that you can do those type of unscripted, unscheduled type of connection points, it's the same thing as being in an office and getting that same type of interaction. Okay, let's talk about the number two thing that they say you lose if you're not um, in the office all the time. And that is that it's not as easy to jump on to key projects, <coughs> excuse me, key things that the company may be working on or strategies. Well, I think you can handle this one the same way you kind of handled the first one. As you hear and you learn and you find out and see little bits of data, about key projects that they start talking about, you need to be the one, if you're working remote, to send the message and say, hey, this project sounds very interesting. Do you need somebody from accounting and finance to be part of this? If so, I would love to learn more about it. Or let's say you're in a certain role within the company and your desire is to move into a different area within the company. Let's say that you're in accounting and finance and you wanna move into internal audit and you hear internal audit is working on the following or has new uh, KPI to focus on something, you need to be the one to send that proactive message of saying, hey, I do have an interest in the future of you know, potentially exploring opportunities in internal audit. I would love to get some experience or exposure by working with the team if you guys ever have any projects that you need somebody to be on. You have to be more extroverted again when you're looking at working remote. You have to be the touch point out and not expect everybody's going to reach out to you. Now let's talk about the third way. And that is getting more exposure to areas outside of your norm. When you're working from home, when you're working remote, you tend to have, you know, team meetings and such, but it tends to be with a smaller intact team. And, you know, if, again, you're part of purchasing or procurement and you're meeting, it's probably meetings with the same people every week. And so you don't necessarily get as big of a chance to connect with individuals in other parts and really understand what's going on and what's focusing with the company. Well, how do you combat that? Again, the onus is going to still be on you. What I would recommend if you're a public company, always make sure you're listening to the quarterly. If you're on a stock exchange and you're a public company, you're listening to the quarterly reports. Hear where the company is focused. Here's where they're looking forward to things. Read the annual report. Now, I know those things can be crazy dry. I'm not telling you you have to read it word for word, but try to go in and focus in on the areas that you think are important as you're skimming through to see what other areas that you may not normally have exposure to that you might be interested in. The more that you can make that reach out and start looking to see what else is going on, the more you can then direct your conversations and your reach outs to other people because you have some insider knowledge. So do I think that, you know, it's going to affect your career if you are working remote? I think that depends on you. You know yourself best, job seeker. If you know that you work best in a remote setting and that's what you want for your work-life balance and your career and, and for your life, then go forward and go for the remote job. Find a company that's going to support it, but then know once you're in that role, it's up to you to make those connections in back with the company.
Think of other ways that you can do this. Well, help out your fellow job seekers. Put a comment down below if you think there's other great ways of how you can interface back with your company and make sure that your career is not impacted if you choose that you want to work remote or work from home. All right, job seekers, as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.